good fight. I've run the race. I've got the faith. This is a very fitting verse for a graduation ceremony, but at the same time, it's rather misleading in this context as well. Because we are not really finishing the race, but we are just entering into another one of its phases. I feel as though with graduating from a Christian school, just from a Christian perspective in general, and we are oftentimes going from a Christian school to a secular university, there's a general sentiment, or at least the thought running through many of our heads, just survive. Just find a church, find a Christian club on campus, just keep your head down in your science and philosophy classes, and pray you make it out a Christian on the other side. But this is not what God would have us do. God didn't save us so we could hide what we have. He didn't give us the Holy Spirit so we could just survive in our environments. He would not merely have us exist in the environments we're in. Rather, He would have us there so that we can see them change for the glory of Jesus Christ. And our class verse provides some good insight into how to accomplish this. 2 Timothy 4 7 is written by Paul looking back on his life as a Christian. So we can look to this as an example of how, of how we should live our lives as well. At first glance, this verse is very simple, but when you dive deeper, uh, I'm going to be taking you through a lot of the Greek meanings of the words. Uh, there's actually a ton of meaning for this verse, even for how small and simple it may be. For the first portion, I fought the good fight. Uh, the phrase, I have fought, in the Greek is agonizomai, which means to contend with adversaries, to strive, to fight. And the word fight within that uh, phrase, I have fought a good fight, agon means, uh, it portrays a picture of contending for the prize of the Greek games. What this really says to us in the context of a graduation is this is not a time to keep our heads down. This is not a time to just lay low and pray that everything goes okay. This is a time where we're gonna have to fight. If we don't fight, we stand in danger of losing all the things that we've gained in God up until this point. And the enemy does not want to see us bring Jesus into the environments we're going into. He doesn't want to see our colleges transformed for Christ. He doesn't want to see people's lives changed. He doesn't want to see people come to know the love of God. So he's going to be fighting against us. So we have to fight back. The second portion of the scripture, I have run the race. The phrase I have run in Greek is teleo. Teleo means to perform, to execute, to complete, fulfill, so that the thing done corresponds to what has been said, the order, the command. Paul's communicating to us through this verse that in his life he has fulfilled the calling of the Lord God for his life. And throughout our whole lives, and especially in college, this is what we must strive and aim for. Hebrews 12.1 talks about how we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. And this is primarily the reason why we must strive to fulfill the call of God in our lives, because we are surrounded by that cloud of witnesses. Because we are surrounded by that crowd of witnesses, we have to keep our testimony by following the will of God for our lives. And in doing this, we just get one more opportunity to show the world around us the goodness of God, and one more way to see God change the people around us. All this is really to say, if we're going to God to the world and change it for Christ, one of the things we must do, one of the things that we really have to do is we have to follow the will of God in our lives so that others may see the light of Christ within us. The final phrase, I have kept the faith. The Greek word for I have kept is tereo, which means to attend to carefully, to take care of, and to guard. My fellow graduates, if you take nothing else away from what I'm saying, take this. If we are to survive, if we are to change our campuses, our workplaces for Christ, we must fight to maintain a personal relationship with Him. This is foundational here to be used by God in the world, because Jesus, just before He began His ministry, set a precedent for this. He went out into the wilderness for four days to fast and and even every day after that, he went alone to spend time with God. And then he would come back to his disciples, and then he would go out and perform ministry. If this is how Jesus lived his life, and this is how we must live ours, we need to have a secret place with God, a time with God where we can get to know him better, where we can develop that relationship with him. And it's going to be a fight to do that as well. From every mature believer I've talked to, and every pastor I've talked to about this, They've all said the same thing, is that maintaining a personal and devotional life with Christ really only gets more difficult as time goes by. But I can say this, if God is for us, we can stand against this. And I can also say that generally when things get harder, when the enemy starts attacking more, it's because we're doing something right and 
it's because we're in a good position to do the most for Christ. So, my fellow graduates, I want to encourage you, as we step up and step out into the world, I really just want to encourage you to fight the good fight, 